Hey guys, Jess from Stark Skincare here, as you know, because you're on my channel and it's me. Um, so I'm going to be talking about a really important subject, especially as we're moving towards uh, the summertime. Not because it's only important during the summer, but because we start thinking more about sun exposure in the summer. Um, but sun exposure is a 365 days a year thing and um, don't forget that because it's such a misconception um, that you only need sunscreen in the summer or starting in the spring because the sun it don't go away it's always around right even on cloudy days the sun is still there if ever it were not there we'd all be in trouble so let's talk about what the sun does to our skin now okay i'm gonna apologize for my hair i have a lot of my hair oil in it it makes it really wild <laughs> i kind of forgot that it was that i was sort of doing a conditioning treatment um before starting my video so i'm just gonna maybe tie this back um so basically the sun I don't know, I don't know of any other polite way of saying this. The sun speeds up aging. That's what it does. Um, so whenever we are um, talking about the skin aging, there's biological aging, which is just what's naturally going to happen to your skin as you get older, just sort of like all the things that you're naturally predisposed to, like what is um, built into your actual DNA. So, I mean, it, it's, you don't know what exactly your skin, like how it's going to age, because you can look to your parents for some signs and some clues, but then there's also so many um, environmental and lifestyle factors also at play. So if both of your parents are smokers who maybe were like farmers or something, or like we're always outside, um, or who, you know, never drank water, drank a bunch of cola, maybe they're alcoholics or whatever, like their skin's going to look very different, um, than what their DNA would have predisposed them to look like, if that makes sense. <laughs> so yes, it is a, um, you know, a hereditary thing, but, um, your parents aren't necessarily going to tell you exactly what your skin's going to end up looking like. Which, for better or worse, that's what it's that's that's aging. <laughs> so there's that's biological aging. Biological is, as I said, it's like what's what you're predisposed to, like what your DNA instructions, as we explain DNA to my four-year-old son, um, would predispose you to have. But then there's also extrinsic aging. So extrinsic extrinsic <laughs> extrinsic aging is all of the factors that you um, have a little bit more control over. So a lot of his lifestyle, um, stress is a huge extrinsic, okay, I can't say extrinsic, extrinsic factor, um, diet, lifestyle choices like smoking or drinking alcohol, um, that kind of stuff is all extrinsic. And one of the biggest ones is UV exposure. So I'm going to start by saying tanning beds are a horrible idea. Um, I know we've probably all done them from time to time, but uh, if you are still using tanning beds, I seriously want you to reconsider the use of them because they are not good at all. They're not a good way to prepare for vacation. Um, you're not doing your skin a service by getting a burn before going to a tropical location so that you have like what like what do we call it? like a base tan like that's I'm sorry that's bullshit <laughs> that's not that's just that's not how it works okay why don't I do my hair before I get on film I don't know I'm, I'll learn this at some point you guys so um photo aging causes visible signs of aging the same way as biological aging does there's some differences um, in what biological aging looks like versus uh, photo aging, but honestly, it like like structurally, it's basically the same. So as we get older, uh, generally speaking, our skin gets um, 
like the epidermis itself gets thinner and it starts to sag and um, of course our bones are also changing underneath so that's kind of what gives an older face sort of that um, sunken skinnier uh, look with like the skin just kind of um, sagging like not as plump as it was in a person's youth um, so what basically happens is that the the epidermis becomes malformed so in some areas um, the epidermis is thicker and then in some areas it actually gets thinner so um, that's what kind of happens that's what sort of causes the unevenness and um, the sagginess and stuff like that so um, what the Sun does is it breaks down the stratum corneum which is sort of the building blocks that create um, your skin and it's the barrier that keeps in moisture and keeps out the environment like the elements and so without that barrier you're getting dehydrated skin and your skin is just naturally not capable of holding in moisture the way it once was um, also what happens with the sun is that um, blood flow will decrease to um, to the to the cells of your skin of the epidermis and so therefore what's happening is you're not getting that plumping because there's simply not as much blood flow and with that lack of blood flow um, your cells aren't able to turn over and they're not able the blood's not able to distribute antioxidants and um, anti-inflammatory agents to the cells which further increases the speed of like the breakdown of the health of the cells um, and what also happens with uh, collagen and the elastin in your skin is that um, it's breaking down but it's also getting disorganized so like the way healthy collagen would look in skin is that it's like a net and it's like a perfectly woven net but the sun will disorganize the strands and it'll become like knotted in some places and then like all thin um, in other places and because of that disorganization that causes the skin to sag as well and then let's not forget that there's melanoma so not only does the skin um, you know it's increased in 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 the aging process by being exposed to the sun but of course there's also the risk of skin cancer so I don't necessarily feel <clears throat> like skin cancer is something that I can add much uh, discussion to because I'm not a doctor so I don't really feel like it's my place um, to be commenting or adding any information and um, I know that there's a lot of discussion about uh, whether it's really the Sun that's causing skin cancer or if it's sunscreen themselves um, from what I understand about the way cancer works is that it's just really really bad luck and um, I feel that the cause for so much disease in the body is in fact inflammation and so m it's my personal belief that anything that we can do to decrease inflammation and to um, to height to height <laughs> to help the body with um, with fighting uh, inflammation fighting oxidative stress in the body is a good thing so along with reducing stress and eating um, fruits and vegetables that are beneficial to uh, you know adding more antioxidants into your body and decreasing inflammation I think is going to do more help than harm like to me it's just common sense um, I mean there's a lot of debate you know maybe our bodies need the vitamin D maybe that's what's gonna save lives or you know maybe it's doing it in a lot of uh, with a lot of um, common sense uh, it always comes back to me with common sense you know it's it's funny how much I actually argue with people about sun exposure and I think that's why I have a hard time discussing it because it's one of those things that I've actually really 
argued with people about and I find it a little bit upsetting to be honest. Um, we've known for over a hundred years that sun exposure is very damaging to the skin. So you've got UVA that cause, causes aging and UVB that causes burns. And, um, you know, the UVB one, at least your skin, like, at least you see it happening. The UVA, it gets absorbed by your skin, it gets absorbed into your body and into your bloodstream. And there is, there, there's, um, there's cause and effect, you know, and there is a lot of damage that your body is absorbing. It's oxidative stress, it's stress to your body. So, um... To me, it's pretty clear that it's that it's negative and not positive. But I don't know for for whatever reason, people really love arguing with me about this. And we talk about you know skin tones and um, if you don't get burns, then it's okay for your skin that you're actually not um, increasing any kind of risk for aging or you know, premature aging, I should say, and um, or melanoma or anything like that, but that's not necessarily true. Um, there's so many factors that go into what can or can't cause disease, right? So someone who is avoiding the sun and, um, you know, doesn't get up much exposure could end up with melanoma, but maybe that's because this person is leading a sedentary life because they're not getting outside, <laughs> you know? And, um, Maybe someone who doesn't get any exposure um, is also inside watching TV, getting a lot of screen time. Who knows what the you know the electromagnetic frequencies are like doing to them, and you know drinking Pepsi all day, and you know there's just so many different lifestyle factors to be factoring in. Someone that's outside all the time could also be spending most of their time in the shade. Um, because they are outside all day and they know that they're more comfortable if they spend more time in the shade and they wear a hat and they're not, you know, just going out um, for a few weeks in the year and just trying to, like, get as much sun as they possibly can, which is kind of the problem that we have in these northern countries where as soon as it's hot enough and as soon as the sun comes out, we're like, take off all of our clothes and just, like, bake outside because it feels good because we have we lack sunshine. So um, I'm a pretty big believer in supplements. I take a vitamin D supplement um, all winter long and into this, well, actually all year long, I take vitamin D. Um, a lot of people don't believe in supplements, but it's something that I personally do. I used, I mean, I did study it as an herbalist and I did used to work in a vitamin shop for a really long time. So it's, I just believe in it, so that's just me, but I'm not giving medical advice or anything like that. What I'm just trying to say <laughs> is that I want people to be more aware of their sun exposure and that um, it's not just vitamin D versus UVA and UVB. It's, it's, it's more than that, and it is known that the sun does destroy your skin at a, at a cellular level, and it actually... Um, disrupts uh, your DNA for several hours after exposure, whether or not you've had a, a burn. So just think about like, if you knew that, you know, um, a particular thing that you were consuming was actually shutting down your DNA for several hours, you would really think about like, whether or not that was a healthy thing to be ingesting, even if it gave you like some vitamins, right? Like if you, if there was like a protein shake or something that was like, okay, well, this will give you vitamins A, D, and blah, blah, but your DNA literally just gets shut down for seven hours after drinking it, would you drink it? <laughs> Probably not. So get a little bit of sun. Of course, it's not going to hurt you that much, but um, just be reasonable with it. You know, use common sense. Wear a hat, wear a long sleeve shirt don't get a burn, but even think about your skin and think about the health of the cells of your skin um, before you even get to that point. I think that's really important. And there's also um, a lot of studies in the correlation between diet and UV protection. 
Um, and so a lot of doctors and a lot of dermatologists never even touch the subject, which I find to be really sad because there is a lot that can be done through just your, your diet and your nutrition. So a lot of, um, omega-3, is it omega-3s? Yeah, omega-3s can actually help with, um, UV protection as well as many different fruits and vegetables, stuff that's really high in antioxidants, um, such as lycopene. So, um, tomatoes are really, really, really good to help you, um, help with sun, the effects of sun exposure. And, um, what else? Fish oils. If you consume fish is really, really, really great. I'm just going to see what else. Um, oh yeah. Also, there's a lot of misconceptions when it comes to sun exposure and, um, you know, whether or not, um, whether or not exposure as children as like when we were children is what's most important or not or like not most important but like the most damaging so there's this myth that um i can't remember what it is like 90 percent of the sun damage that we get happens before the age of 20 or something like that um which actually isn't true so I don't know like when this happened it's like oh if you had sunburns as a kid that means you're more likely to have um like skin cancer at some point like I don't know I don't know how that even ever happened it just doesn't make any sense um another myth is that you can add sunscreen percentages so like if you have uh some kind of makeup or something that's like SPF 15 and then you apply an SPF 15 cream on top of that that doesn't make spf 30 (laughs) that just makes spf 15 so the highest um level of protection that you have on your skin is just the highest number like on whatever product that you're using so um what is the high like what how much should you use spf 30 i think is kind of like as good as you're gonna get and um even though that's supposed to give you 30 times the amount of whatever your natural SPF that your skin has already, um, that doesn't mean that you can go a week (laughs) with just like putting it on once, right? So do apply it every few hours. I know it's a real pain in the butt, but um, only, I mean, think of it, it's like if you're going to be out between 10 and 4 all day long, like let's say you're out traveling, then just reapply it maybe you know, so apply it at like 9.30 before you go out and then apply it at noon, like on a lunch break or something like that. And then maybe just once more before like the end of the day at like two or three or something like that. And you should be okay. And like what I tend to do, honestly, because, you know, I'm I'm like you guys, I'm not into like applying sunscreen 46 times a day. Um, my nose tends to get a lot of damage. So I do my nose and I do um, right here. It's kind of like all the spots that kind of, you know, get the most amount of sun and lips are extremely sensitive it's very thin skin on our lips and then not to forget places like the back of your neck don't forget your ears um shoulders if they're exposed your hands because you don't want like old looking hands and i'm not trying like there's nothing wrong with aging but if you're 30 and your skin looks like you're 55 like it's not a good sign of health right so i'm just I'm just speaking of this from like a health perspective and not from like an aesthetics perspective. Although I think we do all want younger looking, plumper, healthier skin that's able to retain moisture. I mean, it just makes life kind of easier (laughs) in a way, right? Um, So, okay, wait, I'm gonna find, okay, so some really good, foods to avoid and by good foods to avoid i mean bad foods basically um processed meats and barbecued meats um they have a higher level of glycation glycation could be like a whole other video but it's basically um mostly like things that you can that you consume in one way or another that adds to the glycation levels of your skin which is kind of like the sugar content of your skin in a sense um and the damage that that does other things that you should be avoiding are super high fat 
dairy and I'm not just like trying to preach veganism here um stuff like ice cream like especially like the sugar dairy combo no good lots of white processed foods um saturated fat stuff like margarine baked goods are really high in glycation um generally foods that have like a light brown color and that are um cooked with a dry heat are going to be high in glycation so like a boiled potato like even though potatoes okay let's let's take sweet potatoes like a boiled sweet potato would actually be healthier than a baked sweet potato although not as delicious <laughs> um stuff like soft drinks um i mean it's really common sense like i think you kind of know that a bologna sandwich on like white bread with like margarine is not going to be as healthy as a salad that was grown in, like organically grown in your own garden <laughs> that contains like a rainbow of colors right like it's pretty common sense i think um but the one one that i that i do like that i did mention is lycopene i think it's such a underrated um super high antioxidant that can really help with uv uh, damage and repair and what's really great is that the canned version is actually higher in lycopene than a fresh tomato Although I would never give up fresh tomatoes, but just, you know, if you are cooking, um, let's say a soup or a stew or, or a chili or something, that your canned um, tomato paste is a superfood. And I love common superfoods. You don't need to put like acai <laughs> in your um, soup, you know, just like a scoop of um, tomato paste is amazing. Um, oh, that would be a good video too. Superfoods that you already have. All the common, super common foods. Um, I think that's kind of what I want to say for now for the sun. I mean, ah, it's like every, all of my advice, everything I need to say is like common sense, <laughs> you know? So I hope that was helpful. Um, I'll probably touch on sun exposure and sun facts and mix myths and um do's and don'ts and stuff like that and then especially what can be done topically because i realize that i haven't recommended any spf to you guys and i haven't recommended anything topical either so this was just sort of uh the sun and skin 101 i suppose um so thanks for listening thanks for dropping by and subscribe and leave a comment bye <laughs>